Cumberland Forest represents not only the work that we should be doing in the Central Appalachians, but also the way in which we should be approaching our work globally. Working to promote conservation that's compatible with economic development in places that are super important to the Nature Conservancy. The reason that we were welcomed there, I think, is because of the personal relationships that we have with so many of the people, which ultimately led years later to the protection of 253,000 acres across three states. One of the Nature Conservancy's largest ever conservation achievements in the eastern U.S., the Cumberland Forest Project is designed as an impact investment fund that acquired 400 square miles of former coal mining and logging lands, a scale much larger than would have been possible with philanthropic and public funding alone. These areas of southwest Virginia, Kentucky and Tennessee are one of the most biodiverse not only in North America, but the world. In addition to protecting rare species, the project aims to tackle climate change by restoring and managing these forests in ways that capture millions of tons of carbon and repay the investors that made this project possible. But long before this huge deal, the Nature Conservancy was working on the same issues on a much more modest scale. In the late 1980s, we became aware that the Clinch River was a biodiversity hotspot it had one of the highest concentrations of, of rare mussel species anywhere on the planet. We knew very early on that if you were going to protect mussels in a river, you've got to figure out how to maintain water quality and good riverine habitat. And so that quickly led us to this much more comprehensive vision for conservation that involved people and all the different land uses affecting the health of the river. So in the early 90s, we actually opened a field office. And as the Clinch Valley's office work expanded, the vision grew to include economic opportunity in the region, which has been struggling with the decline of local industries like coal mining and logging. We started realizing that um, it was going to be essential for us to work with the farming community because they have a, a major influence on the health of the river and helping them stay viable as farmers while helping them protect water quality became a big goal. Similarly, uh, the mountain forests around the river also play a huge role in filtering uh, water, but they are also an economic resource. And so we built our conservation forestry program to demonstrate that we could manage forests as working, productive, commercial forests for landowners while doing it in a way that is protective of water quality and forest health. Some local communities took notice as they began to look for opportunities to diversify economically while preserving a special way of life. What we saw here in St. Paul was no industry, no uh, downtown shops. It was much like every community in the nation where um, downtowns just go away. And um, I wanted to see a reversal of that. One day I got a phone call from Lou Wallace who said to me, Bill, we need your help in trying to figure out how St. Paul can embrace the Clinch River, which flows right through it. And that led us down this path of working with this whole group of people in the town of St. Paul to help St. Paul develop a vision for the future. We're sitting here beside probably the most biologically diverse uh, ecosystem on the planet almost. And did we know that? No. It took somebody else to tell us that. The TNC little grant, that little injection of money and support got us started. We added industrial revitalization grants. We're now working in brownfield grants. And now about $18 million later, uh, probably more than that, the downtown is beginning to thrive and show that we can do things differently. St. Paul has now built an economy around the Clinch River. With a boutique hotel, two fishing and boating outfitters, bustling ATV rentals, and even a brewery. It's a model for what the economies of towns around the Cumberland Forest could someday look like. 
We think that by supporting forestry and recreational partnerships, those are going to create associated jobs and economic activity in, in local communities. We do anticipate an increase of outfitters, guide services, canoe tours and trips, inner tubes. Folks can buy a permit and access about 30,000 acres of the property for public hunting, fishing, uh, birding. There's probably a lot of opportunity, much we haven't even identified yet. Another piece of our, our work on the project is a community fund that will be used to redistribute um, dollars to local community development projects. Everybody that is part of the Clinch Valley program lives, you know, here in Southwest Virginia or Northeast Tennessee. We're members of different local communities. So we have a lot of deep personal connections to the place and the people. And um, over time, the longer you are in a place, the more opportunities start to open up for you. I think the Conservancy's presence in this program area and the history of our work there uh, gave us the opportunity to do the purchase. The people in the communities have started to embrace this idea that conservation and economic development can really go hand in hand. And while St. Paul is, is really, I think, the model, I just see more like that in the future as people start to realize what this looks like.